Have you ever wanted to see your name in lights? I'll show you how you can turn your name or your company logo into a super snazzy desktop marquee sign with flashing lights, even if you have no experience with CAD or electronics. We're going to use free resources like Canva and Tinkercad to build the model, and then I'll show you where you can pick up some super cheap electronic projects to guide your design. Finally, I'll show you how easy it is to learn to solder because this is my very first soldering project. Shall we? When I set up at 3D printing festivals, I like to display my logo so people know who I am. I have this really big logo printed on the Orange Storm Giga, but it takes up a lot of room in the car. Yeah, we'd like to drive to festivals. This year I needed that room for packing our big electric football guy. And to make sure that I have room to bring home a ton of filament. Come here. Let me tell you something. There's always a good filament sale going on at 3D printing festivals. And you don't have to pay for shipping if you can stuff it all in your suitcase. Check out my video on American Made Filament and you'll understand why I love to stock up on the good stuff whenever I can. This year I decided to make a sign that's just a little smaller in size, but just as flashy. I'm always on the lookout for projects that can add pizzazz to my 3D prints. There's just one minor problem. I've got a real basic understanding of circuits and I don't know how to solder. So for this project, I'm gonna learn a new skill. So, one, two, drink. I don't think any of that actually went to. Okay, yeah. How's that? Perfect. Okay, now you just did three of them at a time. <laughs> All right, go up to the top one of this. Can I get rid of this blurb? Yeah, just. Can I can I blurb it over yeah, here? Just don't hit the. Okay. Sure, I could have made a simple light box and stuffed it full of twinkle lights, but I wanted something more like a traditional marquee sign with flashing lights. Those flashing lights mean I need something programmable, and that's where my sponsor PCB Way comes into the story. I'm sure you've heard of the awesome folks at PCBWay if you've been watching any videos about 3D printing. They're huge supporters of the maker community and their custom PCB boards can be found inside a lot of really cool stuff, even beginner projects like this one. They have a community project database. People who really know their stuff share their plans just like designers share files on Thingiverse or printables. When you find a project you wanna make, you can easily order the same board. For this project, we searched LED chaser lights and picked a project from one of the many that popped up. Bonus, the designer who shared the file is rewarded with commission from our purchase. The boards are easy to order and they're pretty cheap. These only cost about $10 plus shipping and we got 10 of them. So if I make any mistakes or I wanna add lights to another project like my Death Racer, I've got extra on hand. I chose this chaser light project because it was well documented, compact enough to fit my projects, and it's designed to run on five volts, which works great when powered by a USB cable or the receiver of an RC vehicle. There are links in the description for the parts I used, and they're all pretty inexpensive. For a power cord, we just cut the end off an old USB cable and use the red positive wire and the black negative. The data wire can be totally ignored. The board is keyed to show which way to install the components, so it's nearly impossible to screw up. It was also designed to have the LEDs soldered to it directly, but I wanted to spread the lights out around the shape of my logo. This meant using DuPont wires. Now, they're designed to work with breadboards, and they work great for this project. I soldered the male end to the board and then attached the female end to the LEDs and held them in place with a dab of hot glue. Now, I'm not a CAD genius, but I can work a little magic with a program called Tinkercad. It's totally free and designed to introduce kids to computer modeling. Don't let the name fool you. This program is a community service project by AutoCAD, who makes software for grown-ups. And you don't have to be a student to use it, because learning is for all ages. Tinkercad does have a few limitations, one being that you can't start with a normal image file. So if you want your sign to be more than sans serif in a box, we need to start with 2D imaging software. I like to use Canva, which has a very robust free side, but I do subscribe to the pro version for all the great clip art and the stock images, but we don't need all of this for this simple job. Use Canva to design the graphics, or if you already have a logo, you can use it to give it a border that you could turn into a box. 
Later on, this outline will become the container, but right now, you only need to worry about the front. Canva has a saved SVG mode, but for some reason that never works for me. So go ahead and export it as a PNG or JPEG. I don't think it really matters. To turn this into something Tinkercad can understand, we need that SVG file. Now, I like to use Adobe's Free Converter, but there's others that might be better for this one. Now, if you dabble in graphic design and happen to know Illustrator or Inkscape, go right ahead and use whatever program you've got. In fact, a lot of laser slicers and any 2D cutter program can make an SVG. But if that's your thing, you already knew that. Once you've got your logo in Tinkercad, draw a shape around it for the box and then make it the right size. I'm going with an oval for mine because that fits my logo shape better. Center your logo, get it just the right size. Now we're gonna duplicate it for safekeeping. So push it over here on the edge. Now take the plain shape, make it the height you want for your box. I'm gonna go with 80 millimeters on this one. Duplicate it again. Take your second copy, shrink it about three millimeters on each size, center it, then raise it off the work surface. I'm gonna go for four millimeters so it's nice and thick. Turn the second shape hollow and group it to make your box. Now there's a lot of ways to make lids for boxes, but for this particular case, we just need a really simple one because we're gonna screw it down to the box. Uh, it's, it's holding electronics and, you know, we want it to be pretty sturdy. But we will need a couple of pillars on the inside of the box to put those screws into. So we're gonna make a couple of pillars here, make pilot holes inside them, and then space them around the inside of the box. It doesn't have to be too precise, just get four on each side. Group that all together to make it secure. And then we're also going to need a hole on our lid for the wires to come out. Since my logo is an oval, I'm gonna need to add a little foot here to keep it from rolling away. We're gonna need to put some holes in for those LED lights. Now we're just gonna eyeball spacing the holes around my logo. There's no need to get really precise. Do a final grouping to put the holes into the logo. Take the logo, just a plain one without the holes in it. And we're gonna make that a little bit thicker punch it into the front side of the box, turn it into a hole, group that together. And this is so that one where our slicer doesn't get confused and it knows how to do the two colors. Uh, if you try to just put your solid color in with the box color, uh, all you're gonna get is the box color because it doesn't know how to swap. It's a thing. I'm going to show you how I export two color models from Tinkercad so you don't need to paint it in your slicer. Rename your file, grab that color, then hit export. Now I hide that color. Rename the file again and export. Unhide your stuff and change the name back before you close the program. Open your slicer, grab both the blue and white files and it will ask you if you wanna make it into one model. Yes, you do. Then assign the colors and hit print. I used a Cobra 3 Max for this one, but use whatever you got. Now we're ready to put the pieces together. The resulting bird's nest of wires looks kind of terrifying, but the finished project is mesmerizing. The LEDs are amazingly bright, running only on five volts. The uh, potentiometer, <laughs> the pit oh my gosh, we knew we couldn't say this word. The little twisty thing, it allows you to speed up the rate of the LEDs firing, but the slowest speed is dazzling enough. This was a really fun project, and I still have nine more of these boards, so look for more chaser lights to come on future projects. If you enjoyed this project, hit the like button and leave me a comment down below. 
I know I wrote more something for here. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> the potentiometer, the potentiometer, the poten. Yep. Oh, and now I just <laughs> lost my entire teleprompter thing. That's that's annoying. How do we get it back?